right, my friends, I am back. I am back and uh, I am back with the repeat. We are on, uh, this is episode 206. This is part two of working chart number 32 out of Melissa Leakman's book. And uh, we had already worked from the uh, row five all the way up the 32, which was a wrong side row, and at that row is a good place. I had you to change your needle length so that you have a longer number nine, but maybe a 36 inch in length, or just something a little longer. Maybe you have a 40, whatever, to accommodate all the stitches. Because now we're coming back by her instructions. It's printed in the book. Here's a repeat box. See that dark line there? Okay. All we have to do to repeat, we don't have to go back down to 5. We just come back down to row 17 and go back up to 32. 17, every time you want to repeat, 17 to 32, and so on. So this is the, just a reminder. I don't do this until I'm ready to repeat. As you can see, I've taken my highlighter, and I've gone ahead and marked this side of the box and this side. You don't need to mark all the rows or anything like that. It just tells you where your uh, you know it gives your eye a place to know where to go you don't have to search or wonder every time i need to repeat it knows to go back up to the yellow highlight go across and work across the long long row come back if i need to repeat well go back and you stop here repeat however many times then you'll work your whole row all right so now the next thing before we get started on my just a little quick on my shawl if you Remember, if you don't, I have it. I'll bring it out right here. I added some eyelet rows just to kind of, uh, you know, just to give just simple eyelet rows just to give some um, texture or uh, just so that you're not just, you don't get bored with knitting and purling across. All stocking it. Knitting, purling back, knitting and purling back, and doing the chart. So we're going to stick in smile at rows. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I'm going to show you how easy it is. And these are very simple. I did not make them hard or anything that you're going to have to do a lot of counting. So let me show you how we get started with that. All right, so now here is, I have, the first thing we have to do, of course, is to work our, work the shawl. Well, uh, the first thing I want to do is tell you on the eyelet rows, let's go ahead and mark our chart just so that you'll know. And I suggest you do row 17, which we are starting now, and then skip all the way. You know, well, as we work up, then you'll put another eyelet row on row 25. Then you'll work all these rows, and when you get back to 17, you can add another eyelet row. And go on up and work, and then every time you come to 25. So I just put a big blue mark. <laughs> Just to remind me, hey, stop. <laughs> you know, stop. There's something you can do here or add here. So what I want to do is simply knit over, just like we've been working the shawl. I slide the marker. Okay, guess what? There's that long yarn over. All right, it's ready for me to work. And this is row 17. This starts to repeat. So I'm going to knit one stitch, stop, yarn over, go back and knit it again. Those are the three stitches. Now, to keep from having to count and coming up with math, this works pretty well. Let me show you how easy it is if we just, because my numbers are, this on this shawl usually come out even, so let's go. After you work those that long yarn over, then the next stitch, go ahead and knit it. Just knit one. Okay? Then, now we're going to start the eyelet. The eyelet is simply increase and then decrease so I'm going to yarn over to increase and then go right in and knit two stitches together to decrease back to the same number again yarn over knit two together yarn over knit two together yarn over knit two together just like that all right, so you're going to just continue across as we get closer to the chart. Let me come back. I'm just trying to save time and to uh, not prolong and make this one real long. But 
Yarn over, knit two together, and I'll see you as you get closer to the chart. Back in just a moment. I'm coming up as I work across the eyelet row. Yarn over, knit two together. Okay. And I get here, yarn over, and I knit two stitches together. And you remember, I need to end with a knit two stitches together because I started with a yarn over. So yarn over, see if I can get my needle in there, knit two stitches together. I look to see I have two stitches left. Whew, it worked out good. If you had a mistake or something, you need to count the two wings of the shawl to see if maybe you've lost a stitch on one side or the other and see. Uh, because uh, since the numbers are pretty even, it should come out even. And you can always back up and add a stitch or take a stitch out to make a match. Just make sure the two wings of the shawl have the same stitch count if I, if it doesn't come out right. Alright, so now I'm up to the last knit two stitches together. So I yarn over and I knit two stitches together. And guess what? We are at, on row 17, now we're up to the shawl, uh, up to the chart right here. See it? Row 17. The whole row. And we're getting ready to start repeats. So I simply slide the marker. All right, let's go. Row 17 says yarn over, of course. Then I'm going to knit one, two, two stitches. Now inside of the box, see, I'm going to call out as I knit across inside the box, yarn over. Then there's a stitch to the left, so I slip, slip, knit, reach back and knit it. Just like that. Then I knit one. You can see where things fall. Remember, we're learning to knit by landmarks. You can tell that's a center somewhere. So I knit that one. Now a stitch leaning to the right. I knit two stitches together. Okay. Then yarn over and inside the box. Look, there are my three friends. One, two, three. So right here, one, two, three. So I knit those three just like that. Now, my eye, the highlight tells my eye to stop. Stop and go back up to the front of the box. And you know why? Because look, we got all these stitches we have to work. This is the repeat process. So back at the front of the box, I start with a yarn over. Leaning to the left, the next symbol. So I slip, slip, knit. See, now you can kind of move because you know what to look for. I need to look for that knit one. It's a landmark. It's the center somewhere. See it? So I knit one, then I knit two stitches together. Then there's a yarn over. I look for my three friends. There they are. Landmark. Knit three. One, two, and three. Stop. Oh, I got more stitches. Got to go back up to the front of the box. All right. Get me more yarn here. Now you start at the front of the box with a yarn over, slip, Slip, knit. See, you're already remembering. Knit one. There's a center of something. So I knit one. Knit two stitches together. Yarn over. Look for my three friends. There they are. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. So now, if you look right here, I only have a few stitches left, so I need to go outside of the box to continue the row. Row 17, outside the box, it starts with a yarn over, then a slip, slip, knit. Then there's that knit one. I put that in. And then I knit two stitches together. Whoops. Knit two stitches together. I do a yarn over. Okay, there's that yarn over. Then look, I only have one two stitches to knit, and then I add the last yarn over. So there's my two stitches. So I know that that's a landmark that I came out right. So I knit the two stitches. One, two, and then I add the last yarn over. I slide my marker. Stop. Okay, now once I slide this the marker, Remember, we were doing the eyelet. Have you forgotten already? <laughs> on row 17, we were doing the eyelet. Now, we need a mirror image on this side to match the shawl 
on this side. When we stop, we stop with uh, knit two stitches together. You should have stopped with knit two stitches together somewhere or another. I think my stitch jumped over my over my marker. My yarn over did. I'll put it back when I get there. Okay, but I would have had a yarn over and then knit two stitches together, right? That's how we end it. So on this side, we need to start just like we end it. So on this side, I knit two stitches together. See, now that's a mirror image. You'd have a knit two stitches together, slide the mark, or yarn over. A yarn over, slide the mark, and knit two stitches together. Now let's go. That's a decrease. Now I need to yarn over, knit two stitches together on this side to make a mirror image. Yarn over, knit two stitches together. Yarn over, knit two stitches together. Oh, my needles do not want to cooperate today. All right, now I'll let you continue up. And as you get closer, I'll show you how to make sure we end the same as we started on this edge of the shawl. So, yarn over and then knit two stitches together. Back in just a moment. All right, we are making our way to this edge of the shawl. And we are still doing a yarn over and you knit two stitches together. Now as you get near the end or near the marker, stop and just kind of take a look. Remember those three stitches, we don't want to involve them in this little repeat. So there's the three right before the marker. So I'm just going to pull them kind of over to the side. Alright, so now I have a yarn over knit two together so I'm going to yarn over and then I'm going to knit two stitches together stop and look if I make sure those three are separated and I have really one stitch left just like we started over here and what did we start with we started with a yarn over on this edge we started with a after we got past those three, knit one, yarn over. So now we're just doing the opposite. Yarn over and knit one. So now both points or both edges are the same. If not, then go back and check. I noticed uh, when I did that hesitation, I realized back here, your yarn overs do jump over the marker sometimes, and so that can throw you off. So that's the first thing before you panic. Always check and see if the yarn over jumped across the marker. It just happens, people. It's part of it. <laughs> they don't know how to behave. <laughs> Alright, so now I'm up to those three stitches that we always have, that we uh, increase, uh, make the increase. So, I knit one, two, and guess what? The third one is that long yarn over. And in the long yarn over, just like we did on this side when we started, we knit one, stop, yarn over the needle, and go back and knit it again. Now I can slide my marker, knit the four stitches for the border, two, three, and four, and now I can do a big exhale. <laughs> okay, so now I can do a big exhale that I that you remembered all the steps. Now, as you start, you're gonna have, you know, you just have to remind yourself, but if you take it slow, the steps will come back to you. Still looks like like Jay, it looks like spaghetti. I can't tell what I have. Well, just keep going. <laughs> Alright, so had to take a minute and then now I'm back. We were right, we had just finished the eyelet row and we uh, turned the work and now we're on the wrong side. And I wanted to go over with you again how to incorporate this eyelet row on the wrong side. So let's start. We're still on row seven, uh, yeah, row 17 of the chart. So I'm going to knit, of course, the four uh, border stitches. Just a little reminder. Now when I slide the marker 
on the wrong side, we still have to make our increase. So remember, it's, you take the yarn over and then come back to the front. Now we're going to purl the first three stitches. That remains the same. One, two, and three. All right. That's a whole separate thing. Now, the rest of the stitches in this part of the shawl are the eyelets. You know, the yarn over, knit two together, yarn over. Okay, now watch. I'm going to put the yarn in back, and I'm going to knit across all these eyelet stitches because we want to get the garter ridge on the front of the shawl. And this is how you do it. You just knit on the wrong side. Nothing just strange. It's something you do all the time, but you just have to remember the sequence when you're working this because we're flipping back and forth and... Like I said, if you don't want to do the outer rows, you don't. But this is just fun. But most of you have. Most of you are seasoned enough. But I just want it on here so that it's plain, it's clear. And, um, you know, the numbers are pretty even on these shawls, so it's easy to just stick one in. So I'm pulling, and I'm just going to... Oh my gosh, my yarn is just will not move tonight. It's not really hot here, and it's not really cold. I guess it's just right. <laughs> oh, all right, so let me just see if I can get on down here. At least get to this part. So I'm just knitting. Yes, I'm knitting on the wrong side, just in case if you forgot that quick. We're on the wrong side, but we want a garter ridge on the front. So all you have to do is knit on the wrong side of the work, and you will get a little ridge on the front. It's just decorative, and it kind of puts a bottom edge to the eyelet. We'll see it. Let me just get on down, and then we'll turn and kind of look. All right, so I'm down here. I just wanted to remind you. And you have to be careful, like I said, some of these yarn overs, we've done all these yarn overs knit two together, they will cross each other sometimes. So take your time and uncross them if they're, they just like to snug up for some reason. <laughs> all right, let's see, can I get up here? Just trying to get up here to this point. Hold on, I'm sitting on a stool here. I've got to find another stool. All right, so I come up here, and I had noticed I had dropped my marker and lost my uh, yarn over. So it kind of threw me for a loop till I realized what had happened. So right here, I, I quickly flagged it, you know, put something there to remind me, hey, stop. So I'm going to take that off. And so this will help you, too, in case. And then I'm going to put my marker. My marker goes right here. It drops somewhere off. So there should be a yarn over right here. So all I'm going to do is just take, pull up a stitch, pop it on the needle right there. Now watch, it, this is the chart. You know, once we get to the white marker for me, then this is the chart right here. Well, on the chart, you work the work on the front, but you purl on the back. So now we have to bring, remember to bring the yarn to the front. The eyelets were knitted on, or knitted off, but the chart we have to purl. So now I'm just, the yarn is in front, there's the first yarn over, and then I just proceed to purl as usual, just like this. Just purling across. Then I'm going to stop, and then I can do the rest up, up to the other uh, point, other uh, mark of the shawl off camera save a little time but I just wanted to let you see it first okay so let's stop now so I'm purling in the chart section but here we go I'm gonna turn the work now you can see the pretty row of eyelets with that garter ridge row right up underneath it can you see it it will pop out the more we you know as we go down further so this is Row 17, 
we decide to put an eyelet row I share with you how to do it take your time just look at the video slow down a little bit get it all on there and then on the wrong side all you have to do is follow the steps there too but just for the um, the eyelet section you're going to knit on the wrong side and then you'll have to put the yarn in front and purl the chart when I get here I will do exactly the same but let me work across and I will make sure that you end this one exactly so I'll be back in short be back and show you that in just a minute all right I've made my way up to this end and remember on the shawl on the shawl on the, this wrong side I was knitting up so I'm continuing to knit when I got here I was purling the chart when I slid the marker I put my yarn in back and I just knit all the way up on that wrong side so I'm still I'm coming up to those three last stitches that's what I'm looking for to watch for so I just keep knitting till I come up to the last three stitches before that marker so I just kind of knit on the wrong side I'm just knitting the shawl section and I see okay one two three I keep going till I get there knit and then knit then stop and the reason I'm doing this because I want to keep all the yarn overs in the same I want to keep the same narrative for all the yarn over so that you don't have to think okay now wait a minute on this side what okay we just go back into what we were doing this is the wrong side so the I need to put the yarn in front now watch I'm going to purl one two three I'm going to purl those last three stitches because that's what we do normally then remember I have to make a yarn over and once I purl that last stitch I'm already in the yarn over position that's why I want to keep the narrative the same you will just slide the marker put the stitch uh, needle in and hold that yarn over on this side like you've been doing and knit the last four stitches I just wanted to make sure that You know, for those that want to do the eyelet row, it's not that hard. You do it all the time, probably on other shawls. Uh, special crocheters, they do a lot of the eyelet rows, but knitters do too. And when I turn, now you can see the eyelet with that nice row underneath. It will pop more and look better once we continue. Whoa! So that was row 17 that we worked across. And made the eyelets, you know, knit one yarn, knit two together, yarn over, knit two together. Okay, it was row 18 that we came back and uh, worked all the way across. Just follow, I'm not going to say it again because I don't want to confuse you. Just follow the video. Now, when I come back, we're on the right side, and guess what? We're on row 19, and we're not doing any eyelets because I didn't put my little mark. I marked the rows that I'm going to put the eyelet on. For me, it's 17 and row 25. 17 and 25. Okay, so 19. I will see you back on the right side of row 19. Remember, we are working the repeats. We are working repeats. So, I will be right. Well, let's see. I wonder, should I go on and just get it started? just to well now I'm gonna go ahead now now that I've shown you how to do that and you know how to uh, work back over I'll just come back at the chart let me work around to save battery and I will be back and see you at the chart on row 19 because we're really just working the repeats now all right back in just a minute I am back you see once you get a rhythm you can really you know just but just don't you know overdo you don't want to drop anything <laughs> all right I am back now on the right side at row 19 right here and we will be working the repeats in the repeat box so let's get started I slide my marker and the first thing of course I have to do is make a yarn over that's just first and last stitch yarn over now knit one then assemble leaning to the left so slip slip knit then there's a yarn over 
Then we go inside the box right here. So inside the box, let me make sure my, my chart didn't move. Okay, inside the box, I knit one, yarn over. Then there's that symbol, look down, it's highlighted. It's where you slip two, knit one, reach back and pass, pass both slip stitches over and off. Then I follow it up with a yarn over. I knit one in the center. Then I yarn over again. There's a second symbol. Oh my gosh, here we go. It's going to be slip three. One, two, and three. Reach back. Put the left hand needle right in the front. And knit those three stitches together. Oops. I kind of dropped it, so let me go back in. See if I can grab it up. Ooh, I got a split yarn. Okay, I got it. Knit those three uh, stitches together, and right after that, there's a yarn over and stop. So I yarn over, stop, go back up to the front of the box. We start again, because we have more stitches left. We start with a knit one, yarn over. There's the symbol, slip two, knit one. Reach back and pass the two slip stitches over and off. Okay, then a yarn over, knit one, yarn over, and then we have the three stitches. There are three right there, so we're going to slip, slip, slip. Reach back and put the left hand needle into the front of those stitches, and then knit those three together, yarn over, stop back to the front of the box for the rest of the my stitches. Okay, knit one, yarn over, slip two, one, two, knit one, reach back and pass the two slip stitches over and off. I have another yarn over, then the center stitch, then a yarn over, here we are up again to the three slip stitches. So you just simply slip, slip, slip all three. Reach back and knit those three stitches together. I hope I'm in camera. <laughs> Yarn over, stop. Okay. Alright, I don't have that many, so apparently I should be going out of the box now. So the last stitch in the box is that yarn over. So now we're right here and outside the box it says knit one, then yarn over again. Then there's the slip two, one, two, knit one. Reach back and pass the two slip stitches over and off. A yarn over, a knit one, a yarn over. Then there's a stitch that leans to the left, so that's a slip, slip, knit. Slip, slip, knit right there. And then look, I only have one stitch left, then I have to make the last yarn over. So I know that's a landmark, and I know I made it, so I knit the last stitch. And please don't do like I did on the row a minute ago. Don't forget to make the yarn over, slide the marker. Now, we are on the front of the work, so hold that yarn over in place, and knit up the shawl, and do your increase when you get to the marker before the marker just like we were doing before let me just go up a few more stitches then let's just turn and look and make sure I've got it locked in turn that looks real starts to look real lacy because we put and there is there's the eyelet row now it's popping out because we're working down you know we as we continue to work further down it will pop out okay so now row 20 is the wrong side you're going to make the appropriate increases and just purl back row 21 it's not an eyelet row because I don't have it marked with my blue or whatever color you use to or you could circle it do anything to make it stand out so you'll remember but 
Row 21 is not an island row, so I will meet you on the wrong side. Uh, excuse me, on the right side, row 21, at the chart. I'll just work everything up, and I'll be ready to start the chart on row 21. Whew, okay, we finally got a little movement here. We finally, I feel like we're finally moving. All right, back in just a minute. All right, so I am back. I am on the right side, row 21. I'm up to the chart. We're just trying to make some good progress so that you can really feel comfortable and just start working your shawl. Up to the chart, so I slide my marker. I have a white marker. The first thing I need to do is yarn over, okay, and then knit two stitch, uh, knit one stitch right there. I'm row 21, yarn over, knit one. Then I yarn over again. There's a symbol to slip, um, Oh, slip three stitches, and there are the three stitches. See, they're lined up. Okay, one, two, three. So I slip the three, reach back, knit through the front, and knit them together. Then yarn over. I'm inside the box now. It says knit right here. See, and I've pre-counted. See, this is why it's so helpful. So I don't have to take my eye off the chart. So I've already pre-counted. Um, inside the box, knit five. So it's one two, three, four, and five. Yarn over. Now the second symbol, okay, that's showing slip, slip three stitches. There's three stitches right there lined up. One, two, three. Reach back and knit those uh, three together. And get all three. Make sure you get all three. Oops, there's a split yarn. There you go. Just take your time. Now knit them. Then there's a yarn over. Stop. Okay. I have more stitches. I see the yellow highlighter, so I go back up to the front of the box. It starts out with, right here, I got to knit five stitches because I have it pre-counted. So one, two, three, four, and five. Then a yarn over. I look for those three stitches. There they are, right there. I slip three. One, two, three. Reach back, go in the front of all three, and knit them together. Oh, this is nice little relief, okay? And then I yarn over, stop. More stitches. So I need to go back up to the front of the box. I start again with knit five. One, two, three, four, and five. All right, yarn over, slip the three stitches. There are the three, one, two, three. I don't know where all these planes coming from this afternoon. Knit those three together. Then there's a lash yarn over. And then right outside the box, I'm to knit five. Right here, I start. It's pre counted. I know I'm supposed to knit five. One, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, then a yarn over. My gosh, we really getting to work out. There's that symbol again. So I need to find the next three stitches right there. One, two, three. I slip all three. Go back with the left hand needle and pick them all up. And then knit the three together. And on the chart, I have one stitch left. And then I have to add the last yarn over. Let's check it. Yep, I have one stitch left. So landmark, I know I made it. And then make sure I yarn over, slide the marker, and hold the yarn over in place. Now I can start working up this side of the shawl. I'll work a few and then stop and turn it around. Okay, so let's stop. Take a look. Okay, my needle is getting full, so it's hard to spread out. Remember, anytime you want to change and get a longer needle, do it on the wrong side, but don't do it on the um, eyelid row. <laughs> 
don't do it on your eyelid row, but you know, do it, pick a, a wrong side row where it's just really simple and easy. And you can see right there, you can see my eyelids kind of popping out. There they go. There you go, right there. Okay, so now, that was row 21. 22 is the wrong side. Make the appropriate increases. I will see you back at the chart, right side, row 23. All right, we are up to row 23, the right side of the chart. And as I get to the chart section, I'm going to slide my white marker and let's begin. I start out with a yarn over and then I knit two stitches. One, two, yarn over. Now the symbol, there's a three stitches, slip three, reach back, and knit those three stitches together. Yarn over, now I'm up to the box. And look, we have to just knit five again because I've already pre-counted. That was just like the last row. So I knit one, two, three, four, and five. Make sure I didn't drop anything. We'll just go back, find that yarn over and go one, two, three, four, five. Okay, then there's a yarn over. And what do you know? There's the same three stitches. So slip three, reach back and pick them all up and knit the three together. And then a yarn over after. Stop. Right here, stop, because there's a yellow highlight. Go back up to the front of the box. And I knit five again. One, two, uh, two oops, I just went two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, five. All right, then yarn over. Slip the three stitches. Let's find them. There they are right there together. So I slip one, two, three. Reach back and pick them up. And knit them together. Yarn over. Highlight. Stop. Go back to the front of the box. Knit five. One. Two, three, four, and five. Okay, yarn over. Knit one, two, three. It's the same symbol. Again. Okay. Then yarn over, stop. I only have a few stitches left, so that tells me I'm on, should be here on the outside of the box, and outside of the box starts with a knit five knit five. So one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, then there's a yarn over. Same symbol. I look for the three stitches. Let's see. Oh, I think I'm long. I think I'm missing a stitch. Let's just see. Let me go back and count my five. One, two, three, four, five. That's right. I got a yarn over. Then if I do slip one, two, three, go back and knit those. Okay. Then it should be a knit two. So did I drop my yarn over from the row before? Let's see if I drop the yarn over, or I can go back. Make sure the yarn over up here didn't cross over. I started with the yarn over knit two. This is just a way to kind of check yourself so far. Or you can count your yarn overs and see if you miss one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's just see. This is just a good way to count. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, 
but we had remember we had to uh, repeat so I go back there's two in there eight nine ten let's see one two three just good practice four five then back up six seven eight nine ten yeah. okay so I think I dropped one of my yarn overs and that's the way you can check too and of course let me get my yarn here we can just pick up a stitch to make sure because it should be right here I'm gonna pick up my stitch right here All right, so now I have. Ooh, it's kind of fiddly. All right, so I had to knit three stitches together. I have a yarn over. Now I have. Knit two, so I picked up that yarn over. Yarn over, knit two, one two and then I add the last yarn over slide the marker and we continue up the shawl kind of threw me for a loop there for a minute I guess I'm that's a sign you're getting tired <laughs> but you can go back and always kind of go to where the yarn that that funny stitch worth the three stitches so there's one there there should be a yarn over before there's a stitch Okay, yarn over and then knit two and then you make the last yarn over so that's a good way to check nothing wrong with sometimes stopping and knowing how to check before you continue all right so now we will continue up the shawl just need a few more stitches so I can turn it all right so there is there's the eyelet section. Here's the chart section. Looking really pretty. Can you see the tulips popping out? Maybe not so much on this color, but on yours, I don't know what color you picked, but one, two, three, four. Should be up to a four. Okay, tulips. All right, so that was row, the right side, row 23. Or 24 is the wrong side. Okay. And row 25, do you want me to work at one more uh, eyelet row or is that just uh, over explaining? But row 25 is where I meet you back at the chart and uh, maybe get you started just to remind you how the eyelet, you know, row. I don't want to over explain it. So I never know. You know, some people say, oh no, I need to tell me again. <laughs> All right, I'll see you back at row 25 of the chart. All right, so I, you know, did a little bit off camera, and then I thought, you know, I was, we were getting ready to start. Uh, we're going to work row 25, which would would ha would be a uh, eyelet row. And I thought to myself, you know, I'm trying now, this year especially, <laughs> after all these years, trying to understand and practice less is best. So instead of re re uh, demonstrating that same row and if you don't get the if you don't say the exact same things it really confuses people so what I will do is simply over in the comment section put uh, row 17 timestamp so that you will and say eyelet row so that you can go back and see the original how I, how I explained it the first time that way I'm not giving two explanations because you can't remember what you said <laughs> at least I can't <laughs> so less is best it's what I'm trying to learn, teach myself. All right, so and I, so now the easiest thing now to do is just for you. Okay, we have worked. I can take this off now. I'm gonna just take this and sit it to the side. My little magnet. All right, we started with working the whole chart without any repeats from row five all the way up to thirty-two, and then once we finished that together, then we started working the repeat box we've done all that so we're just up to row 25 which you will work but you will since I marked it I suggested that row 17 and 25 would make a good place to put an eyelet row if you like 
I will timestamp it, like I said, over in the comment section so you can just listen to it again. That way you don't have two different you know, explanations or whatever. Now, uh, every time you want to work or repeat, you don't have to go all the way to the bottom. You just come to the bottom of the box, row 17, and work up to 32. That's one, two, three. And with the first one that we did together, that makes four. If you're taller, you might you might want to repeat a fifth time. It's just up to you. So now I can walk you through how to just simply end the shawl. It's very simple. I made it very simple. So when you get up to row 32, that's a wrong side row. And you just purl back except for the borders. Alright, then you're on the right side of the fabric. Now I'm going to move this back now because now I can just explain the shawl because I did it real simple. I just wanted this pretty little uh, one, one by one rib bottom edge. I'm sorry, I'm hitting the camera. I'm trying to get all the stuff out here. Let's see, can you see it? Okay, I can drop it a little bit. Okay, that's a lot better. And I just thought, well, I can just walk you through most of it because we've done it before. All right, so here's the bottom of the shawl. I finished all the repeats, and I have worked row 32, a pearl row. Now I find myself on the right side, and I'm done with the chart and everything. So what do I do? Well, I want you to simply knit all the stitches across. Just simply knit all the way across. I won't try to pull it. Just We just need to make the rows nice and clean so we don't have all kind of crazy stitches and lose any. And if something happens, we definitely don't want to have to go back and have to go back. We don't want to have to go into the lace. So I knit all the way across on the right side. Of course, when I get to the wrong side, I simply turn the work and per except for the borders. Well, you just know on this, I'm sorry, I changed it so that you knit the borders and everything. Just forget about doing the border now. Just knit all the stitches. That's what I changed it to. Then when you get on this side, except for that first stitch, you know, the first and last stitch I knit on every row. You might slip it. So right here, when I turn to the wrong side, I knit that first stitch and then uh, just purl all the way back. So now I have a clean slate of stitches. I have a nice... Uh, stockinette, uh, clean area, and all the stitches are nice and ready to go into the one by one ribbing. And that's all we're going to do. The first stitch, the edge stitch, see if I'm on. Yep, I think I'm okay. Alright, the edge stitch right here. You can slip it. I knit it on every row, the first and last stitch. So since this is the right side, now you're on the right side. We don't have any borders anymore. We don't have any eyelet rows. It's just nice and plain because I simply had you to knit and purl back every stitch. Now, I simply, after that edge stitch, I knit the edge stitch. Then I knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. Just like we always do. Just like we're doing our sweaters. And you're just going to go all the way across. Take your time. You probably need a pretty nice long needle. <laughs> Circular needle by now. You know, you probably need one of those 48 uh, needles or whatever. Then on the wrong side, uh, when you get where you get to the last stitch, knit one, purl one, and you're going to, since it's the right side, you should end with a knit stitch. And then my border stitch, I knit on every row because it's a right side row. When I turn the work, I knit the first stitch, okay? Then I purl one, knit one. Just read the stitches. Purl, knit, purl, knit, all the way back. Like we do our sweaters. Don't make it harder, you know. Don't make it hard. It's just what we always do. Now you're going to work your um, ribbing for at least a good two inches. A nice two-inch rib would look really nice on this shawl. You can go long, well, wide if you want, but at least two. See? All I did was just read my stitches on the front, knit, purl, knit, purl, on the back, purl, knit, purl, knit. I just keep an edge stitch in knit on each end, like I always do. Once you reach your two inches, okay, make sure 
you know, go, continue to go till you're on the wrong side. I want you on the wrong side of the shawl. Let me get the other side. Other. You want to be on the wrong side of the shawl. Because now, all I want to do, we're going to do is, we're going to just bind off. But we're not going to bind off in pattern. I put this bind off on here, not in pattern, but in my regular uh, bind off where I'm on the wrong side and I use a knit stitch and it just keeps such a nice clean edge. It was so nice. I don't know if I made a mistake or if I meant to do it because I made this shawl, you know, some time ago. So I don't really remember if it was a mistake or if I meant to do it, but whatever it was, it turned out beautiful and I loved it. So on the wrong side, make sure you're on the wrong side. And you just go to the first stitch, which is an edge stitch for me anyway, and I knit it. Then I knit the next stitch. Reach back and bind off. Knit the next stitch. Even it doesn't matter if it's a pearl or not. Just knit the stitch. You're gonna knit on the wrong. You're gonna use a knit stitch on the wrong side and bind off all the stitches. But now uh, take your time and make them loose, or either get you uh, like you know the double pointed needles, maybe some. Uh, thicker ones, you know, maybe a larger one, just to keep it loose. And you're just going to bind off in the knit stitch. Knit the next stitch, reach back and bind off. Knit the next stitch, reach back and bind off. And you're just going to go along, stop every once in a while. And I like to give it just a little tug, just to kind of straighten it out and stretch the stitches a little bit. Knit the next stitch, reach back and bind off. Just in the knit stitch, even though it's on the wrong, you can see it's the wrong side of the fabric. It doesn't matter. That's what I want. I want it to be. And then that puts that funny line on this side of the fabric. You know that line that you get. Okay. And on the right side, normally we would bind off in pattern, but it gives me this little row, tiny row of pearl bumps that look like just little pearls. And, and I don't lose the shape at the very end of my one-by-one one ribbing. Now, if this is going to work on other things, I don't know. Like I said, I did this this um, shawl uh, probably last year, and I just didn't get a chance to uh, film it or teach it. So I thought this year would be perfect. But you can see the stretch is not... It's a little on the limit side, but it looks nice because it keeps the shape of the one by one ribbing. See? So that's all there is. After you do your two inches or so, you're on the wrong side. You bind off in the knit stitch. And if you need a little larger needle just to keep it loose, you know, just grab your, grab yourself up one and have at it. And at the end, there's nothing else to do but either put a tassel, I put a piece of fringe, I put a little fringe on here. Let's see if I can turn it. You can put a tassel. I also have, you know, I have uh, 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 shawl dangles where I put on the end where I make from my little, my selection of beads. I like to have that hanging down sometimes, just especially if I'm going to give it to someone. You know, it just makes a pretty gift. And if you do the eyelet row, then you're going to have these pretty little eyelets. Nothing hard and fancy. Everybody, you know, everyone puts eyelets on shawls, so it's nothing. But I just wanted to make sure that for those who are still trying to get your knitting mojo <laughs> up to speed, I just wanted to make it really simple for you to remember how to do it and, you know, how to decide where to do it. And how it looks once you do it. Really easy. But the star of the show are the it's the beautiful and let's see if I got got it in the picture in the frame here. Is the I call it let's see kind of back back. Okay. To me they look like little tulips in a row. So somewhere, I guess I'm going to try to put the uh, word tulip in the name. I don't know. I just thought it was so pretty. It it almost, it could work for hearts, but the tulip works so good because you can see it's like a, a 
a definite line here and then a center line and then it comes down like this or like that where a heart would come like that you know so that's why I didn't call it heart I called it tulips and you can just go across and you can see and you can see your uh, eyelids where they start right there and then like I said since I'm using number four weight, I call it my sweater weight because it's just uh, easy on my hands and, you know, older, you, I don't have to work the smaller yarn anymore. I can just work this and enjoy still being able to make. And I got this really pretty sweater one by one rib. So it's like a sweater shawl. That's what it feels like. You can just wrap yourself in it on a cool or cold uh outing or going out somewhere going out to eat you know it's always cold in the restaurant sometimes that would be so nice so what do you think of this what do you think of the chart i hope i took it slow enough for you to get it i hope you give it a try it's a lot of fun like i say all you have to do is just prepare the chart so that you don't have to take your eye off of it and then lose your place or you know things do still happen but <laughs> but at least we at least we we're trying to you know do better so thank you so much for joining me i have enjoyed this um i hope everyone had a nice valentine day i'm sorry i couldn't get this ready but like i said i gave you a jar of kisses <laughs> to make up for it <laughs> no i haven't eaten a whole jar i'm trying to wean myself off chocolate but i bought that for the sweater so i'm gonna put them in the freezer that's a little trick you can do. Put things that you shouldn't eat in the freezer. Then you can't eat them. <laughs> or you can only eat one at a time because they're froze. <laughs> all right. This is Jay. This is Jay's Knit and Pearl Jam to all my friends everywhere, everyone, every size. Thank you for joining me. And I wish you happy, happy knitting. And uh, I can't wait. I'm already working on it. I've got several things all ready. I just got to film on people. It's work filming. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm so tired. So, <laughs> But happy knitting on this one. Give it a try. And don't forget to send me some pictures so I can share it with all our YouTube friends. They enjoy looking at, at, your, uh, you know, at your work. And don't forget to add some selfies. This year I really want you to add selfies in there so we can see what it looks like on you and everything. And, you know, jazz it up. Put a flower, put a necklace, put a scarf. <laughs> put some sunglasses so we, look, you don't want us to see your face. Put some sunglasses on. <laughs> All right. Until next time, happy knitting. And I will see you later. Bye-bye.